<coughs> well, not a good start for a tutorial, but anyway, back to the tutorial now. <laughs> Oops, got a sore throat. Anyway, so part two of the minigames tutorial series. So in the beginning part, we managed to make a timer for the for the game. Okay, we haven't actually teleported anyone to the map yet, though. That sucks. What's the point of having like a game timer if you can't actually play the game? Or if the game does nothing, so let's get working on that then. To teleport everyone to the game, we're going to need some spawns on the actual map itself. Okay, so let's start doing that. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to cut the disappearing plate uh, mini game from the mini games model and paste it into the workspace okay so what we're going to do now is I'm going to add part okay add part I'm going to make this really small I'm going to make it one stud by one stud in fact I'm going to make it even smaller than that let's make it one stud by one stud by 0.2 in the y-axis okay we're going to make it smooth um, so that when you spawn to it you don't actually stick to it in fact we should make it uh, unjoinable uh, okay so unjoinable on each side okay unjoinable unjoinable and unjoinable okay so nothing can actually join to this now it's unjoinable let's make the material smooth plastic we don't want any graphics on it uh, it's just a spawn we want it as basic as possible okay Right, so now that we've got it as basic as possible, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to just paste it anywhere anywhere in, in the map. We're going to need loads of these things as well. So let's call it spawn so that we know what we're actually talking about. Spawn. Actually, no. Yeah, we'll call it spawn. Um, and let's paste it away from the edge of the of the map. We don't want it touching the edge because if people like spawn onto the mini game and they spawn right next to the edge, they could be walking and when they spawn onto the map, they walk straight off the edge, and that would be pretty annoying to like get spawned straight into a mini game and walk straight off the edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste many of these across the map. Oh, whoops. Okay. Just paste a few of these. It depends how many people you want in your server, really. I'm gonna put I think I'm gonna have nine in mine. Okay. Actually no, I'm gonna have twelve. Yeah, that'll do twelve. Okay, so I'm gonna have twelve spawns in every one of my mini games. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna highlight all of them. Make sure that I'm not highlighting the disappearing plate. You can do that by highlighting them all, and if you've selected the disappearing plates model accidentally, then hold control and press the disappearing plates, just click anywhere on it. Okay, so if you want to select multiple items at once, you can hold control and select or deselect the item that you want to highlight at once. Okay, that's just a cool little trick you can use the control button by holding it and clicking on different items. Okay, so once I've selected all the spawns, I want to control group them. Okay, so group them by pressing Control Group, I mean no, Control G, uh, to group them all, and then you want to call that model Spawns. Okay, now what we can do with this model is we can cut it and paste it into the disappearing plates model. Okay, and now what we want to do is right click on Spawns, select Children, okay, then make them all transparent, and also anchor them all. So all anchored, and then anti can collide them all. So what you should do is you should select all the children inside the spawns model, make them all transparent by setting the, to one transparency to one, anchor them all by checking the anchor box, and anti can collide them all by unchecking the can collide box. Okay, that's all you need to do. Then you can close the spawns model and cut disappearing plates back into mini games, paste it back into mini games. And now we're set to go. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to back, go back to the mini game uh, main script and we're going to now make a teleporting uh, little thing. So, once we clone <coughs> the mini games, <coughs> disappearing plates, into the workspace, 
we're going to wait three seconds and then we're going to teleport everybody to the map okay and then in between teleporting to the map uh, we're going to wait three seconds again okay uh, in fact no let's take this wait out I just want to I want to do something first before I wait okay so teleporting people to the map let's make a little comment teleporting people to map okay so now what we need to do is we need to make a little loop so for for i v in pairs do and inside the little brackets of the iv in pairs loop we're going to put game dot players colon get players if you don't know what this iv in pairs thing does you should really watch my previous tutorials in the advanced and beginner series okay uh, basically what we're doing is we're looping through and a we're looping through a table and in this case the table is all the players in the game okay so what we could do is we could just say uh, v dot character uh, move to uh, and then the spawn location um, so in order to do that we need to actually get the spawns model uh, from the from the mini games disappearing plates model so spawns equals uh, game chosen clone dot spawns because we called the model spawns obviously uh, we could do that uh, I'm just thinking the best way to do this now because there is two ways of doing it. Uh, no, I'm just going to get children. Okay, so we're getting all the children from our spawns model. So all the spawns are now in a table, this little table uh, table variable. Okay, and then we could say uh, spawns so that we're using the the i the i number now inside this loop spawns i dot position now I will go over this now so the player's character is now being moved to using this move to function uh, it's a built-in function in in Lua we're moving the model uh, it only works in models by the way so we're moving the model to spawns i uh, dot position so the position of our current spawn uh, in the map okay but the thing is, this could crash the script because say the player has just entered the place and their player has loaded inside the player's bit here but their character hasn't yet loaded. Okay, That would cause problems in the, in the script and that would crash the script because the character hasn't actually loaded yet but the player has. So we're going to get the player but then we're going to try and get the character from the player but the character hasn't loaded so we're going to crash so we don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little check for the character before we actually uh, move the character so what we're going to do is we're going to say name equals v dot name this will also work uh, we're going to just assume that everything in the workspace in the workspace is not has not got the same name as any other player in the game but I'm going to do a little check for that as well so don't worry so name equals v dot name. Uh, yep. So name equals v dot name. Now we're going to do the little check. So check equals game dot workspace. Okay, game dot workspace um, colon find first child name. Okay. So we're going to search for the first child in the workspace that has the same name as our player name okay and this is going to check if the character has loaded because the character in the workspace will have the same name as the player in the little players service here so now that we've got our check we need to check if the check is actually a valid player because we could have somebody in the in the game that has the same name as disappearing plates so somebody somebody's name could be called disappearing plates they're going to spawn in the workspace, it's going to find disappearing plates but that's not going to be the child is it? so we don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to say um, check uh, humanoid equals check find first child actually no, first what we want to do is we want to say if check then 
So if check is true, if there is something in the in the workspace with the same name as our player name, then what we're going to do is uh, so this if statement says if check is true, it's either it's either going to be check is either going to be equal to the model of the player's name, so it's going to be equal to the character of the player, or it's going to be equal to nil. So if check is not equal to nil, basically, so if check is true, uh, that's a quicker way of writing it, just putting check into the if statement condition. Uh, I do explain it more in my previous tutorial uh, of if statements. But anyway, if check is true, then check humanoid equals check find first child uh, humanoid. So we're now checking for the humanoid inside the player. Uh, if this is true, if check humanoid is true, then now we know that our character has indeed loaded. So we can just say, uh, instead of doing v.character move to, because that would just be using extra processing speed, because uh, now we're going to have to re-get the character. But we've already got the character, because our character is called check, isn't it? <coughs> our character is check, because that's equal to the, to the character in the workspace. So we can just say check move to, uh, <coughs> to move to the spawn's position. Uh, so I've got a sore throat at the moment, I don't know why. shouldn't be sore. I don't want it to be sore. Anyway, um, so we're now moving the character to the spawn position and this should work now. Okay, so now that we've moved all the characters to the to the map, let's wait. Uh, actually no, let's make a for loop saying for i for i hold on for i equals so say three to zero uh, minus one. Do actually no three to one. Wait one second. Okay. H dot text equals game begins in uh, three two one, and then our game is going to begin. Okay. So this looks pretty good at the moment. Uh, we've got the players teleported to the map. All we need to do now is make the plates actually disappear. Okay. Uh, in fact, you know what? I might do that in the next tutorial because I've already been over too much, and I don't want to make the tutorials too long. So, yeah, that is basically how to do it. Uh, how to teleport all the players to the map. Uh, it's just a little little block of code that checks if the if the player's character has loaded first. If the player's character has loaded, then we're going to teleport them to the map. But if the player has just joined the game and their character hasn't yet loaded, then we're not going to teleport them to the map. And in the rare, like very rare case where somebody's player name is equal to one of the items inside the workspace, then well tough luck for them, they can't play the game. <laughs> oh no, I think we should make a little validation to make sure that anyone who has the same name, who has the same name as something in the workspace should be able to play the game. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, let me just think of a good way of doing this. I think we should have an array of all the items that could possibly be in the workspace and then we're going to compare we're going to compare that to the player's name uh, yeah actually you know what let's th let's do that next tutorial I'm going to do that next tutorial um, I'm going to yeah I'll blow that next tutorial anyway so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial hopefully you, you learned now how to how to check how to make all this validation work and uh, how to teleport people into the map. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test start server and then start player just to make sure that the teleporting actually does work. And when the teleporting works then we're good to move on. So there needs to be more than one player to start so test start player and then let's do that again. Test start player so let's start up two players. Okay. Okay, awesome. Map chosen disappearing plates. So there it is. Hopefully we get teleported there. Okay. So 
looks like there's an error because it's not moving on. Let's go to the server, view output, see what the error is. Okay, so line 21, player is not a valid member of data model. Okay, so let's go to line 21 of the script and see what's up. Oh, here we go. I said game.player rather than game.players. I forgot the S on the end. Okay, so if you just change that and go back to start server, start player. Okay. Start player, start player. Okay, map chosen disappearing plates, and there it is. Hopefully, we should teleport there now. There we go. Game begins in 3, 2, 1. Time left 10, 9, 8, 7, and so on uh, until the time ends. So, next tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to uh, check if, this, if, the per if, if there's a player in the, in the server with the same name as something in the workspace. Look, say there's a person with the same name as main script and they join the game, their name is main script uh, it's not going to teleport them to the map is it because of all the validation we did so what I'm going to do is hold on, we, if we do go back, actually no, you know what I could actually fit that into this tutorial if we go back and instead of moving the check to the workspace we could move v.character to the workspace but then our script could crash because it's going to check, uh, say main script has just just joined the game and that they've just joined the game and it checks to see if the main script is in the game yep the person is called main script, they're in the game but their character hasn't loaded yet it's still going to go ahead and try to teleport their character to the map but you know what, that scenario is so rare um, that's, yeah, that scenario is incredibly rare, in fact I could go to search people main script yeah um, the last time that person logged in was the 13th of August 2013 uh, so <laughs> as long as our variable name I mean as long as our the names of our objects are like really rare for anyone to actually have the name of then well look, the last person spawn location logged in was the 10th of May 2008 and what about disappearing plates? Let's see if there actually is a person called disappearing plates. Yeah, that was in 2012. So the scenario is so rare that I doubt it's ever going to happen where somebody of the s with the same name as something in the workspace is actually going to join the place. So if you just change check to v.character move to, so actually moving their character, uh, I mean, you are going you're not really going to have a perfect game where there's absolutely no crashes in the script there may be, I don't know, like one server out of every hundreds that actually crashes uh, a day so that's that's fine, so you can just do that, v.character move to uh, it's an incredibly rare scenario, that won't happen so yeah, next tutorial I'm going to be going over actually making the place disappear and uh, yeah, so I look forward to going over that uh, so until then, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.